Africa's health system is in crisis. Could this be the answer? I'm Alvin Hall. 25 years on Wall Street have taught me a lot about business. But now I'm on a new journey around the world, meeting a new breed of entrepreneur, more interested in doing good than making money, social entrepreneurs. And I want to help. I've come to Zambia. It's my first time in Africa and my first experience of the world of the social entrepreneur. As a financial and business expert, I hope I can help them become even more successful. But while I'm totally at home at stock exchanges and financial institutions, here the challenges are bigger and tougher. I'm here in the Chapata district of Zambia to meet a couple who are addressing a serious problem for the delivery of health care services, transportation. This event at the British MotoGP has been organized by bike enthusiasts Andrea and Barry Coleman, founders of Riders for Health. Let's go. Look at the man. Give me 100 pounds. The funds one. raised here help kickstart their new programs in Africa. But in the long term, Barry and Andrea are determined that Riders for Health projects must be self funding. It all started 20 years ago. Back then, they used to raise money for other charities that worked in Africa. They went to see how their money was being spent. What they saw shocked them they realized a whole new approach was needed. Now they are bringing it to Zambia. I saw a motorcycle that was new and gleaming, and it was completely dead, that had done 800 kilometers. And we know you could have 150,000 kilometers of healthcare delivery out of that, and there it was, dead at 800. They knew it wasn't Africa's harsh conditions that were the problem, but poor maintenance. Inside here, we have our drive chain. Their solution? Train local riders and drivers to carry out simple checks and preventive maintenance. The result? Hardly any breakdowns, no matter how rough the roads. In 1991, Riders for Health launched their first program. Today, they employ nearly 300 people in seven African countries. They manage more than 1,300 vehicles that provide access to health care for more than 10 million people. And today, although they manage all sorts of vehicles, the motorbike remains the heart of their work. The motorcycle is low cost to buy, it's low cost to run, and public health workers and people who are running specimen transport and so on, you can't really afford to buy a big vehicle for everybody who needs one. They're also a single track vehicle, so and many of the places out in rural communities are very narrow people and animal tracks, so a motorcycle can easily get down those. Making sure that everybody is mobile in this really difficult terrain. Here in Zambia, Barry and Andrea plan to start with a motorcycle courier system for medical samples. If successful, patients in remote areas will get a diagnosis to life-threatening diseases fast. Their first task is to find an office. It sometimes takes them years to set up a new scheme. Here, I want to see them up and running in just six months. It's good to ride his new home. Yeah, crossing the thread. Maybe I should carry you over the threshold. <laughs> <laughs> Finding a base is just the first step. They need to train and recruit riders and import more motorcycles, so they have to be decisive. As far as I'm concerned, this is as near perfect as you're going to get to, to get started. We need to get started, and, and that's the main thing for us. However, they can't risk signing anything until the government gives them the go-ahead to operate. 
Meanwhile, I wanted to find out why Riders for Health is so important to Africa. It didn't take me long. The roads here in rural Zambia are terrible. There are huge trenches and huge potholes. I'm on my way to a rural district clinic to see the impact that these astonishingly bad roads has upon healthcare. This is Bonunka Health Center. It's 30 kilometers from the nearest town, but that journey takes an hour and a half by car, let alone by bicycle or on foot. A lot of these people had to walk, and they're sitting outside on this porch waiting to see the nurse, the only health care professional for miles, for miles. Joseph Sakala is one of two nurses here who struggle to keep up with the demand. Some of these people seem as if they've walked huge distances to get here. Yes, yes, of course. The furthest point is about maybe 15 uh, kilometers or so. But that, that's a day's walk, isn't it? Yes, it's a day's walk. <laughs> that's amazing. I can't believe people walk these distances, often weakened by malaria, TB, and of course HIV, which infects one in six Zambians. A key part of Joseph's work is diagnosing these conditions, but his equipment is limited. For many patients, he has to send their sputum and blood samples to the district laboratory 30 kilometers away in Chidisa. And how do you get them from this hospital to the district laboratory? Sometimes when, when one of us here is getting there for some other uh, work schedules, he can take them along with him. If we don't get any vehicle in a month, then it means that the specimen will stay for a month or two months without getting to our laboratory, and they'll always go to waste. It's a long time to wait, especially for TB patients because a TB patient is a threat to the community. Quick results are also critical for patients who are HIV positive. Joseph can't treat them until he knows exactly how compromised their immune systems are. And speed is especially important when the patient is a pregnant mother. If the right treatment is given early enough, the chance of the mother passing HIV to her baby can drop from 40% to just 2%. Helping the client means giving her the medication, which is appropriate. And if we keep waiting for the results and the disease is getting worse and worse, there's no help, there's no service we are doing to the client. And it's all about transportation, isn't it's, it? It's, yes, it's all about transportation. It's hard to see things that you've read about actually confirmed, and it's hard to walk among the people realizing how difficult it is for them to get health care. And I think I have this knot in my stomach because emotionally, it's just hard to watch. It's hard to see, and it's hard to take in as reality. Barry and Andrea's scheme is successful, their riders will call at each of the district's 15 rural health centers twice a week. They'll pick up samples, returning just a couple of days later with the results. Let's go. Go. That's good. Practice makes better. Lord Chapari is training his first three new recruits. Hold on, you can stop. Mavis, Gideon, and Violet. Having worked for riders in Zimbabwe, Lord has been brought in to manage the new scheme here. Is it typical that some people have problems going in between these things? Yes. It is? Yes. Gideon seems to do it pretty well, but Violet seems to miss yes. every other one. Yes. When you're not used to it, that's when you can find it difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Violet is competitive, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Is. yeah. No, you know what? These people have never ridden a motorcycle. Yes. Some of them not even a bicycle. Some yeah. of them haven't even ridden a bicycle? A bicycle, my yes. friend. Yeah. You're you see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, her approach is getting better here, isn't it? Yeah. I just had the courage. I didn't want to embarrass myself because I really know myself that I can do it. Go, don't worry. Continue going. 
it is the greatest thrill to see Violet riding the motorcycle right. because to see people who are living in communities that really need help and all of a sudden they're not just doing helpful things, they're bikers. <laughs> you know, they're, they're bikers just like me. <laughs> Have you ever had somebody who just couldn't do it? Even yourself, I can train you and after three days, four days, you go right. <laughs> I, I think I may be your biggest challenge ever. Why? <laughs> Will it mess up my hair? All right. Um. <laughs> my ears are down. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get my okay. ears up. Oh, okay. Exactly. I just hurt my nail. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh. Is there a manicurist around? <laughs> <laughs> than it looked, but in Lloyd's capable hands, it didn't take me long to get the hang of it. I have never ridden a motorcycle before in my entire life. This was an amazing experience, and I think Lloyd would say that maybe there's some potential in me to be a, ri a rider for Riders for Health. I may be a barely passable rider, but let's talk about something I do know about, business. Riders aim to provide a health transport system that African governments can afford. They charge a small fee just to cover their cost. The fee is fixed for five years, so governments can easily budget for it. Riders mainly manage other people's vehicles, like those owned by health ministries. But these are often very old and expensive to maintain. Their new plan, which they've already launched in Gambia, is to buy vehicles themselves and lease them out. It will be cheaper in the long run, but first they've had to take out a $3 million loan. At first I thought the borrowing of the $3 million was a little bit of a stretch given your overall balance sheet. My opinion has completely changed upon meeting you because I now know that you're not drifting with the numbers. The knowledge rests with the two of you and that you can monitor it much more closely. So I'm much more comfortable with, with the borrowing than I ever was before. And there, and Andrea and Barry are no strangers to risk, but I had more challenges for them. There were two types of risk that really stood out for me. One was currency risk, and the other one was the price of fuel. We need to put in some formulas that enable us to look at what kinds of risks they are and how you make sure you have an early warning from something that's going from, well, that might be okay to, ah, that's going to be, you know, that could be terrible. But the other challenge is to become a role model. Very few social entrepreneurs actually have assets. So I think you can become an interesting example of how you actually turn something that started out, as you did, as a charity, into a functioning social business. What I like about Barry and Andrea's idea is its simplicity. Maintaining motorcycles so they run on a regular schedule. It's not rocket science, and it's not sexy, but it saves lives. There's a long way to go before Violet and her fellow riders can start work for real. I'll be back in six months to see if they succeed. I'm Alvin Hall. I'm on a journey around the world bringing my financial and business expertise to social entrepreneurs. I'm back in Zambia to meet Andrea and Barry Coleman. Mm -hmm. Have they succeeded in setting up their life-saving medical transport system? Hello. Hello. Oh, How are you? <laughs> Good to see you, Barry. They hope it will be the start of a huge nationwide transport network. But when I last saw them, they were still waiting for permission from the government, so they couldn't even lease premises. Did you get the office open here? 
Yep, same office, the one we saw last time. We haven't seen it yet. We haven't, at least we haven't seen it working, but Lloyd's there, he's installed, and Alfred's oh, over there. Yeah, he's, he's well established, and he's working well with the ministry, and our couriers are all ready to go. They're all trained up and retrained by oh, really? Lloyd. I must say, during this last six months since we saw you last, there have been some very anxious moments that, <laughs> you know, Alvin's going to arrive, we're not going to be ready. But it, it's all come together very nicely, oh, and we really feel surprisingly well established and we're excited to see the new office. Well I think we should head off and do yeah. this now. Great. Let's go. Okay, Wonderful. Let's go. Here to greet us is Writers for Health trainee, Violet. So how has it been? Oh, it has been great. A great? Yes. Yeah, it's really a good experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the longest ride you've taken so far? About 200, 200 plus. Or was, it, yeah. was it stressful? It was. Being <laughs> the first time riding that long, yeah, it was very It's amazing. <laughs> Clearly you've been doing a lot to get this up and running in a yeah. very short window of time. You yeah. deserve congratulations yeah, for that. You. You're really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. everybody for <laughs> Things seem to have gone really well, but I want to know how they've done with my challenges. The first was to look at hedging against fluctuation in fuel prices. Fuel prices really, in effect, never go down. So you can anticipate higher fuel prices all the time. Though hedging would have some value, what we've been looking at is projecting the upward trend of fuel prices. In some countries we've got uh, fuel storage facilities and we're trying to develop that more so that we can buy f as much fuel as we can Excellent. in advance and, and store it and manage it in that way. And what so about the currency fluctuations since you're operating in all these different countries? We have uh, two organizations between us and the realities of currency so we consult with them on what they think the currency situation is going to be. Andrea and Barry are shrewd business people, and it's good to see they're managing risk in ways that work for them, even if they have decided against my suggestion for hedging. And how are you doing with the bigger challenge of opening this office officially? How is that coming along? Well, we're very close now. In fact, tomorrow we'll be ready to do this launch. I can't believe that I'm here actually to share this with you. It's going to be as exciting for me as it is for you. I can't wait for tomorrow. Riders for Health are launching their Zambian scheme here at Chadiza District Health Center. It's clear just looking around that there's a real need for riders' approach to vehicle maintenance. This laboratory is the only one in the district. By the time the samples arrive here, they're often damaged and completely untestable. But starting today, Riders will set off from here to the 15 rural health centers they'll serve, some more than 100 kilometers away. They'll return the same day with the samples packed in special backpacks to protect them from heat and vibration. We are very much ready. The program has been accepted, and I believe in our local communities up there in the villages, they will really appreciate to see our riders in their villages. I hope this launch will be the first of many more in Zambia and elsewhere. I'm especially pleased for one member of the team. Violet will be Zambia's very first rider for health. People are counting on me, and I believe it will be something big. And knowing that I'm part of it, that I'll be riding, trying after the cutting of the ribbon, I'm the one who's going to ride there. It will be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's so gratifying to cut a ribbon to enable the life-saving program kicked off. This has been a journey of discovery for me. Six months, eight months ago, I didn't know about this organization and I've met them and I like them and I like the writers. Um, so it was like, you know, watching your children, you know, leave home to go to college or something like that. I'm confident they can achieve their goal to expand throughout Zambia. There are some tough challenges ahead, but I know Barry and Andrea are prepared to make difficult business decisions to ensure their social enterprise continues to deliver a cost-effective service and a great health benefit. 
My concern is, are they passing on their knowledge to ensure that writers continues after they're gone? People talk to us about succession all the time. They look at us rather sort of sadly and say, it must be hard because it's your baby. We say, it's not a baby. It's a huge, you know, hulking adolescent. And we've got to make sure it's not a delinquent. We've got to make sure that it grows up steadily and safely. And that's in the hands of the people in Africa. If we have the sensation, yes, these guys are going to have many, many launches, it'll be kind of thrilling that we're not there. Violet and her fellow riders will be visiting each of the district's 15 remote rural health clinics every couple of days. And one of the first is Joseph's. With their coming, I'm so very happy that the whole program, the whole chain of health service won't be interrupted. It will be quick. Imagine the patient comes today, leaves the maybe the sputum specimen, and then Violet comes, picks the specimen, and then she brings back the results after a day or two. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> as excited as I am for Barry and Andrea, I'm probably even more excited for the people that I've seen riding along the roads or walking these long distances for health care. At least they can get answers, and maybe by getting the answers to their diagnosis early, they'll take the right action that will help them to live longer. That's the excitement of this moment. <laughs> Next time, I'll be in India, finding out how farmers are transforming their fortunes from dusty soil to fertile crops. <laughs>